Hey YouTube, it's James Silva from 180pts.com and today's video we are talking about how to get yourself physically ready for the police power test. Now the test I'm speaking of specifically is actually from Chicago, so this is Chicago police power test, all these numbers in the back here are based on those numbers specifically. If you're from another city and have different qualifications for your police exam, just send it to me on the comments below and I will get back to you, I'll even make you another video if it's something different on it that I didn't cover on these four exercises here. Okay. Now, first of all, we have two halves. We have the men's side and the women's side, okay? And we have four exercises. One is a sit and reach, which a sit and reach is basically for flexibility, um, more or less, and we need hamstring flexibility for the sit and reach. The one minute sit ups is next. And in the one minute sit ups, it's more muscular endurance in the core as well as the hip flexors. Okay? The third one is actually max bench press. And the max bench press, it, it depends because there's some, um, I know some suburbs of Chicago as well, they have different qualifications. They don't necessarily use the actual bench press, they'll actually use a machine. So if they're using a machine, it, it varies because most machines are actually lighter than benching your own body weight with an actual iron bench press. So, the third qualification is the one and a half mile run. Now, as you can see, based on the age range you fit in, the one and a half mile run has to be completed in different times. All of them have to do based on your, your age range as well. So, um, let's get started on this. Let's go over the first one, which is the sit and reach, and we'll get right back into it. So, you can see on the sit and reach for the men, the average sit and reach is around roughly 15 inches um, unless you're older and then as for the women the average sit and reach is a little bit higher than 15 it's around like 16 17 inches so for the box test the box test since we don't have a box here I'm going to explain to you how the box te test works basically where your heels are at is usually the 15 inch mark okay so the first thing you want to do is for your age range, and since I'm actually uh, 30, I'm, mine's 15 inches, so I have to get to about right there. So you have to reach forward to touch at least 15 inches, which is where my heels are on this line. Okay? If you have to go 16, 17, 18 inches, you actually have to go further. So the first thing is right now my muscles are cold. So the best thing to do is actually give them a slight warm up and then also stretch them beforehand. The more you stretch out your hamstrings or any of your muscles, it's like a rubber band. So basically, the more you stretch them out, the more they'll be able to stretch. So, and then the colder the rubber band is, the, least it, the less amount it would be able to stretch. So, basically you wanna keep your, your legs down flat and just reach forward and be able to get past that 15 inch mark. Now as you can see right now, my hamstrings are pretty tight. And that's because I just sat down on the floor and just started going into the stretch. Now, the best thing you could do if you're getting ready for this police exam, now it depends on exactly how much time you have um, for the power test. Because if you had uh, just found out yesterday that you have to take it tomorrow, you don't have as much prep time. But if you know you have a good amount of time and you know you're about to become a police officer and you want to get ready for this test, you should give yourself invest, invest in a lot more time for this. So um, the best thing you can do is start stretching now. If you can start stretching, you're going to eventually just build up more elasticity in the muscle that you need, which is a hamstring, okay? So this is the best way you can stretch out your hamstring if you're on your own. If you have a partner to help assist you in a stretch in the hamstring, that's always better. Always better than doing it on your own. But if you cannot and you only have yourself, most of the time you probably will, the best thing you can do is put your leg onto something. Now it depends on how high you can get it off the ground. Um, if you're really tight in your hamstrings, which a lot of Americans are because we sit down all day, you're gonna you're gonna have to put your foot on something small like maybe a stool or a chair and then work your way up. So right here I have a bar. And I put my heel right up top of that bar. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lean forward into this leg to get the good stretch in the hamstring. And I'm going to hold this for anywhere about 20 to 30 seconds. And 
and then do the other leg. Okay, now the second thing is a one minute sit up, okay? So basically, there's two ways around this. One is they have you put your hands across your shoulders and you're gonna get your elbows to where your knees are. They have to touch. And that's what they'll count as one full repetition, okay? The second way is hands behind your head and get your elbows up to your knees. It depends on which variation they're giving you, okay? now. If you do not have the strength to get yourself up there, now you see it, my feet are put, tied down by the weights, they will have somebody holding your feet during this test, okay, to count your repetitions as well, that's the same person usually. Now there's, if you do not have the strength to pick yourself up, as much as you want to believe it might not, your stomach might not be strong enough, it also could be your hip flexors, okay. Now. If you can get yourself up a couple times but you're struggling at the minute like and you're only getting 15 or 20 reps done and you need to get through to anywhere from 37 to well 23 to 37 roughly if you have to get around that range the best thing you could do is start adding weight into your ab routine because what that's going to do is that's going to help build muscle strength as well as muscle endurance and then when you're not using the weight, you'll be able to perform more repetitions than you would with the weight, obviously. So we'll practice with doing it where you have the ball right around your chest and you're doing the sit-ups. Okay? You can also do it where you keep the ball over your head and do the sit-ups. Another key point I want to point out is that when you're doing these exercises to get yourself ready, you want to give yourself a good 48 hours rest between the last time you've worked out abs and chest to the next time, okay? And especially if you're about to do the, the, the test itself, the power test itself, you want to give yourself that 48 hours rest or even a little bit more so that way your body's well rested and ready to perform these exercises, okay? Now, the second exercise here is actually for the hip flexors because this is the muscle that actually helps bend from your hip to your stomach. Um, for the sit-ups, okay? So this is another exercise that you might need to actually strengthen to help get you to do form that many sit-ups in the amount of time, all right? So what you're gonna do is just taking your knees straight up like this and right back down, okay? If this is way too easy for you, you can always go straight out with your legs to help build more muscular endurance.